So you want to know how to upgrade a truck to unload with air with a tanker? Stay tuned, I'll show you. What's up everybody? Turex Trucker coming at you here with another video. Y'all, I had someone leave a comment, Todd, want to know just how do you unload and how do you upgrade your air compressor to unload a tanker well we're going to show you how or how mine is set up now there's a couple two different ways you can do it you can either have a pto mounted on your transmission which runs a shaft to a separate air compressor that's mounted on the frame a bracket that's mounted on the frame of your truck and then that generates the air so as your transmission's running it powers that that pto that pto spins that spins a shaft or a reduction gear in it then that goes to your air compressor then that spins in there and then that produces air right there then you have your airline hooked from your trailer to that now the way i have mine set up bendex makes a two-stage air compressor i have that on my motor so your average truck runs off a single piston air compressor You'll notice a little small little air compressor about like this on your truck. Mine is a two-stage air compressor. You'll see the, the two pistons in it when I get up there and show you. So that's set up so that whenever you go to unload, you hook your airline up to wherever you have your air set up to pull from. That goes to your trailer. You open the valve. Mine's tied to my air tanks. It'll drain all their pressure out as soon as my, my gauge drops and notices I'm losing air, it, the governor throws in their compressor and it starts producing double air. So, of course, the more RPMs you run, the faster your, your motor, the faster your pistons are going, the faster you'll produce air. So, but generally it's recommended about 1400 RPMs when you run a two-stage air compressor. Now, with a PTO-driven air compressor, like I say, that runs a PTO, runs a separate shaft, and then that runs to a separate air compressor that's mounted on a frame. Generally, you can get away with like between six and 800 RPMs on those because you have a reduction gear. So those are actually a little better in some sense because you're not running high RPM, so you're not really burning too much. You're not gonna burn as much fuel. You're not gonna heat the air up as much and heat your motor up as much running at six to eight hundred as opposed to fourteen hundred rpm so it does have its trade-offs and you're not putting wear and tear on your motor as much as you will with a bendex two-stage air compressor now on my bendex two-stage air compressor that i have i kind of like it a little better at times now granted when it's hot sometimes i'll raise my hood just to help kind of cool it because you know you're running up those high rpms to air unload you're 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 pulling in more heat that fan the motor's going to heat up so I'll, i usually lift the hood just to help try to cool the motor off a little bit more of course the fan's always going to kick on in the heat but the advantage to a two-stage air compressor say you've got an air leak on your truck somewhere well now your two-stage air compressor is going to kick in and it's producing twice the air that'll give you a little more time to get pulled over to a shoulder because now I have pulled my glad hand off running at 1400 RPMs and pulled the glad hand completely off the freaking trailer with the trailer brake, you know, the trailer brake release. And it could take up to a minute before I lose enough air pressure to set the trailer brakes. So, you know, that's a good thing right there. So if you do have an air leak while you're driving, that two stage air compressor will help maintain and get you to the side of the road. So that is a plus on that. Like I say, it will put more wear and tear on your truck, but it does have its advantages. Um, but the way it's tied in, it's tied in so that you'll run an airline. Of course, it's just like regular thing. Air compressor, you just run your airline straight from your regular truck's air compressor to your air tanks. Of course, the governor and all that operates the same. So as soon as you open up the valve on the back of the trailer, your governor kicks in starts producing air so and you just tie a tie line you run a line from your air tank over to where you hook up your hose to your trailer you put a ball, ball valve on there so you can close it off but 
we're going to show you that right now. All right, everybody, we are here. We made it out here. Now, this is my air compressor. How you gonna tell? My motor's green. It's a Fitzgerald in-house in-house motor, Detroit D60, 60 series. This is your air compressor. Now, normally your truck's air compressors are normally only about this big. You have just had this one single piston, and it cuts off about right here. As you can see, I've got all of this. You can see one piston, two pistons. Grant, I've got a little little oil leak right here coming from it, but here's my steel braided line because it will, this air will get hot when you're running and you're unloading because it's not made to just constantly, constantly, constantly produce air. So it's better to run a steel braided line all the way back to the back. Now that's running all the way to my governor. Well, my governor running all the way back to my air dryer. Which my, my air dryer it's back, way back here, underneath my frame. So, once you open the valve, of course, that's, the governor's gonna realize you're losing air, it's gonna kick in. Both pistons are gonna be going, you're gonna hit your air. That's gonna run nice, good, hot air because your air line back there in the back, you will feel that and that is nice and hot. So it's putting out a lot of hot air running to the dryer, running back into my fuel tanks. Now here's the thing you need to know about this. When I first got this truck, Fitzgerald had it tied in, had a small airline run and tied in to here. Well here, you're bringing in super hot air and then that's coming in. So you're heating up your daggone, um, your O-rings in here and you're heating up your compressor even more. So do not have tied in here, which this is actually still warm and I haven't run this since I shut down in the morning. Run a fresh new line. You see I've got it tied directly into the main air filter. That way you're pulling in nice, good, clean outside air. Of course, make sure, you know, it's behind the filter. <laughs> so it's running. So I've got cold, regular, fresh air coming in through the filter, comes in and then that comes in. That way it breathes. They had a small airline tied in, coming up and tied in right there. You don't want it tied in because like I say, you're pulling in all this hot air and coming in. So we actually put in a good three quarter inch line. So it's breathing nice, good, fresh air. Now, we'll show you back here. Do, 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 do. Here's how I have my setup. I mean, I've got a brace here coming up holding it. I have a ball valve right here. This ball valve opens. As y'all can see, we have my airline that's run down through the frame. It's run down underneath, and that is tied directly into my fuel tank or air tank. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let's see. Uh, try to climb underneath here so you can see. You can't see it, but it's actually tied up. Tied up up into one of the ports. Right up there. So, you can see the line running right up there. I got it in wire loom, runs down the frame, and then drops down, ties directly in to my air tank. That's what you need to do, tie it directly into your air tank. Now some have tied theirs into their dryer. I prefer to just tie mine into the freaking air tank. Um, you get that good surge at first, but if you want to put a T off on, on your dryer before it goes to your air tank, say fine, so be it. That's up to you. But me personally, I have mine tied into the air tanks. Oh, let me get out of here. 
so then you've got your airline here your airline will tie in now when you're unloading a tanker I prefer and I suggest to everybody you got your regular 50 foot three quarter inch airline I suggest getting a smaller jumper line I've got a 10 foot jumper line tied in so that way like a trailer here so I've got just this so some trailers that you pull have air hookups at the front so if you have this small jumper line all you gotta do is just pull this small section of jumper line and run it right there that's usually a little bit more easy and to manage like I say I've got it where I can just pull it off over here real quick as opposed to trying to drag the big line but you want the big line so if you do have a trailer you've got to run all the way to the top of the trailer to hook up and you don't have this line that runs up then you've got it now a downside okay now when you go to blow the line clean say you don't have to go forward like we do a lot where we unload into one tank and then you have to stop it unload into another tank product tank well you've got to clear the line because if you have to stop unload midstream then of course you're not gonna be able to blow your line out so now the problem with that is now you've got product in your line and once you close your internal valve close your external valve you're gonna have product still in the valve still in your freaking line once you close everything you need to get that product out and into their tank to clear the line so you can unhook it disconnect the lines to go to the next tank to unload usually your one hose will not reach all the way here so if you have a jumper line you disconnect from the trailer you have to go ahead and pull your whole big line all the way back here and it will not reach your fitting here because we always use a fitting here that has a bleed off here and I will show you what that means well, I'll show you all show you just a second all right here we go y'all this is what you call a three inch fitting with a bleed off so if you have a three inch hose you can hook your three inch hose here and here's a bleed off so you can take once you close the valve on your trailer you still got product so you hook your airline of course this is always going to be closed while you're unloading that way the product doesn't come out while you're unloading but then you hook your airline up to here you turn your air back on so that it pressurizes the airline then when you open this up that'll push all the product out that line and then you can dag on um clear, clear the line once you clear the line close this valve if you're unloading into a tank that drops down into the top if you're in a bottom feed tank you've got to close their line first that way the product doesn't back up and then you close yours disconnect and then you'll open this and you'll bleed the air pressure off now if you're unloading to the top of a tank which means the product goes in goes up and then just dumps down into the top of the tank so it's constantly vented as soon as you close your valves and close your air there's going to be no pressure build up but if you're unloading in the bottom of a tank there's going to be that pressure so you'll have to disconnect your air here open this valve and that bleeds any kind of pressure that's in that hose you don't want any pressure in that hose because if you go to take the ears off and take the hose off it's going to freaking pop off any product in there's going to blow it'll kick you back so that's why it's always important to have a fitting with a bleed off same thing this is for a two inch hose so if you got a three inch connection on your trailer two inch hose same thing you've got a bleed off so you can always open this and vent any kind of pressure that's in that line before you disconnect but that is what you do but now like i was saying before if you're using that blue hose and you're coming all the way back it's not long enough to reach that fitting it's going to be back here at the trailer so that extra jumper line will help you give you the more room that you need to hook up to it so that you can hook up and blow your line clean so that's why i always suggest if you're an owner operator even if your company got if the company won't get you that little what i call it we call them cheater hoses if they won't get you that extra little cheater hose buy you a cheater hose it's only like freaking twenty dollars to have a hose shop make you that line i mean all it is is a small 10 foot line and two freaking chicago fittings i actually had two of them made for me and one for my company driver um so i've got an extra because i've had to use use two before when I'll be unloading into other trucks in Miami, I had to use two to get from my trailer to their trailer because the other guys didn't have air. So 
it helped i ran one jumper line from here to my trailer and I had to run another one from the top of my trailer to their trailer so it came in handy having two depending on if you're having to do multiple things but that's just my opinion anyway y'all this is what you do this is how a setup is with a compressor like i say i have nowhere else to mount that pto driven here now on the peterbilt that i had ordered the fuel tank is slid further back because it doesn't have the apu here apu's over on that side um actually the apu is on this side but the fuel tank is smaller slid back so between the the box and the fuel tank there's a spot right here so i could have actually mounted the pto driven compressor right here it had a bracket that came with it the you bet bolt the bracket to the frame their compressor sits on it you get a shaft and a knuckle that goes in to your pto which drives off your transmission and then that powers the air instead of running through your air tanks like i have so anyway that's just a little bit of how you do it with that like i say i had somebody ask me about the setup how you unload with the air compressor like that so that's why i just give it in depth it's very in depth i'm sorry if it was long drug out but that just tells you more specifics i know this video isn't for everybody only for for tanker haulers that want to know information about or people who's looking to get into tanking people's looking at how the setup works this gives you the information anyway y'all we hope everybody's having a good safe blessed day we will see y'all next video y'all peace out even when you feel low you can still go even when you feel slow you can still go even when there's no hope you can still go i never answered a no man i still go 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 Go, go, go